Hey, how's it going everybody? Just getting uh, set up here. Fix the mic, put it in the right place. Let's see what we got. All right, so um, I don't know why the text jumped around. There we go. Weird. Uh, how's it going? Hey Rico, we are going to be uh, trying, hey, we're going to be trying to finish this off, hopefully. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is kind of like, we're going to try to do like um, a bounce light on the characters. Uh, we're going to do, uh, I think the background's like pretty much done. The only thing I did while I was, a, while you guys weren't watching was, uh, I turned down the glow a little bit. I might turn it down a little more. It's, it's like really intense. Uh, and I quit, I, I like tweaked some of the, the, um, layers and stuff. Uh, Tom actually gave us notes publicly on twitter they weren't they weren't really that big of a deal uh it was just like little things like i had uh this kind of colored red and and you know he was like it's supposed to be green and like this little part under under his like uh side here is supposed to be yellow and it was red before you know stuff like that um so uh like i said we're gonna try to do some bounce light on the characters Try to get that uh, taken care of. So hey, my dudes, it's Wednesday, and uh, that means it's new comic book day. You guys getting anything fun today? Anything come out that you're uh, you're into? I've been uh, slacking. I can tell. I know you can tell if you're a regular viewer of the stream because uh, I went dark for a while. <laughs> I did like one stream last week and that was it uh and it was because i just got swamped with work like the deadpool book took it out of me um cap grave diggers union what is grave diggers union oh is that um is that matt wilson's captain america white knight haven't read it yet yeah i i read um I read the first issue of White Knight. I really liked it. I went to uh, I went to college with Sean. Um, we're, we're we're buds from way back. Uh, Toby and Wes. Um, Cypress, Toby Cypress. I'm interested in Gravediggers Union if that's if it's Toby Cypress. Uh, Yeah, White Knight. White Knight was really good. Uh, Sean's writing that, right? Like, or is that the last thing that that he's doing that he's not writing? I, I can't remember. I think he's writing it. Um, at any rate, I'm stoked on it. Uh, Hollingsworth colors that. He's really good. He works really well with Sean. Um, they do like a this like uh. Okay, so I should explain what we're going to do here first. So I selected all the characters. Um, we're going to kind of like uh, trace out where we think the light is going to fall. Um, I kind of want it like lit from below kind of thing. Even though Tom's shadows, well, Tom's shadows indicate like a, you know, light from this direction. You know, from the big uh, glowing disc I put behind them. Maybe we should roll with that. Fight, fight the line art or don't fight the line art. I think those are our choices. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sean's uh Sean's uh stupid talented. <laughs> uh, he was stupid talented in college as well. <laughs> he's a good guy. He put he puts his foot in his mouth sometimes, but he's a good guy. Um. So maybe we shouldn't fight the line art and try to light it from below. Let's light it, you know, kind of from the side. Here's here's one thing that I was I'm, I've been like debating about doing is putting a secondary light source around them. So 
We could take. We could. We could. I know Tom laughs when he fight the liner. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like he gave us notes before. <laughs> so I was thinking about putting like, uh, you know, kind of like a, a rim light around, which would work really well, like something like this. Um, and then and then do the same for for Miracle down here. Uh, but I'm afraid that we're going to start to diminish the um, silhouette here a little bit by tracing it because like it's going to start to like th these two tones together start to kind of flatten it out um, and maybe we won't do it on Barda up here but we might do it on Miracle down here I'm not exactly sure so we're going to try to figure that out um, as we go uh, let's not let's not fight the art when it comes to the secondary light source though so yeah, we're just going to kind of trace it out. Um, anything that we think, like we're doing dark under the eyes, um, and it's going to be, it's going to be lit from the side here. So let's kind of make his cape has like a weird shape to it. Let's, and let's leave enough room for if we decide to do the, uh, Ooh, Photoshop. You do not like this document. <laughs> um, yeah, I read the first issue of White Knight and, and really enjoyed it. Oh my god, is Photoshop going to do this every time? We might have to like... We might have to like shrink the document just for sanity's sake. Um, yeah, it's alright. Uh... It was a it was a brutal take on Batman. I mean, that was the the point of White Knight. Um, is that Batman's pretty brutal? But like, man, I don't know. Like, the the whole dynamic of like Batman Joker um, is that like the Batman like pulls back from the edge, um, doesn't doesn't cross the line, you know. Um, and uh, in, in White Knight, he's real freaking close. But I guess that's that's where the drama and the tension comes in, you know? Um, I kind of fell behind on uh, Redlands and uh, uh, Mr. Miracle, so I'm, I got I to gotta catch up on those. Um, I don't know if any of those are out this week or, or if they're out in the past couple weeks and I just missed them. Um, but yeah, man, I was in the tank. This Deadpool book that I, I just did, I just did um, number 290. And oh, man. Oh, man. There's a lot going on in this issue. And I, like, I don't want to spoil anything, but like it was a ton of, uh, you know, not necessarily like heavy lifting, uh, but it was a lot of like you know knockouts in line art and stuff like that like entire backgrounds redlands were out last week yeah man i love that book uh jordy jordy and vanessa are crushing it on it um i'll definitely pick it up uh every every issue i've been really into uh yeah so yeah, this Deadpool book that I just did, it was like, you know, this, this crazy star backgrounds planet stuff going on. Um, and it's all beautifully drawn by uh, Scott Koblish. And holy smokes, it just took forever to do like what is essentially like kind of busy work on my end just to like sit here and like trace out the shapes that we need to colorize you know um but it was like that for like the back quarter of the book so it got it got real crazy real fast um just like i found that i was doing this thing where i wouldn't even bother doing that stuff like the page would be done otherwise and then at the end of the night when i'm like exhausted i would go in and just kind of like 
be like, all right, we're zombified. Let's just start tracing planets and get this done, you know? Uh, but yeah, the last, the last day of work was like an extra five or six hours of time just doing like uh, special effects, colorizing line art and stuff like that, which is like, you know, part of the job, but like, holy smokes, this thing just took forever. <laughs> Uh, it came out good though you guys should check it out when it hits stands I think 290 did I say 290 I think it's we just did 291 is the one I turned in or I don't know I so many numbers so many things to keep track of it'll it'll pop up in the sidebar up up there up there <laughs> um So yeah, we're, we're just kind of like tracing out where we think the light would be. Um, the cape's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because we're gonna have to put a lot of like gradients of color through it to, to make it kind of like work right. So we're keeping it loose. <laughs> this is, uh, we're, all we're doing right now is kind of like providing a guide for uh, the rest of it. And I'm hoping to keep it simple like I think that Tom's line art can like stand on its own without um, a lot of like glitz and glamour kind of thing um, it is a superhero book though so or this is would be a superhero book if we were doing this for a gig so I mean that comes with its own baggage of like expected you know you're supposed to hey boys uh you're supposed to do like x amount of of uh shiny crotches per issue that's how it works right they charge you by the crotch i don't not a lot of people talk about that within the industry um but you know it's out there now trapping lines for print oh yeah man we're definitely going to talk about that with this piece because uh like i don't know if you you can tell you can probably tell especially like in barda's hair but like this is untrapped right now um yeah we're going to be talking about trapping lines um this is going to be especially tough to make work too because uh we're using stuff that's not like black and white line art. Like this is black and white line art. And I think we're going to use this for like the basis of our tra uh, like line trapping. Um, but I don't know. I kind of want to see, I kind of want to mess with, I kind of want to experiment a little bit and see if we can get it trapped without using that. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, when, um, yeah, line trapping is, is like a necessity. Um, Nem Nemish, Nimish, uh, was br bringing it up in chat. So, what he's talking about is he or she, I don't, I don't know, uh, what this screen name on my computer is talking about is that, uh, which I assume is a person, but we don't know. You guys, you guys are all bots in the chat, right? You know, he, yeah, all right, he, just like what a bot would identify with. Uh, he said that uh, he was wondering if we were going to get into line trapping and we will um, when I was in college uh, we did uh, we talked a lot about it because at the time we were kind of being trained it was like 2002, 2003 um, and we were uh, comic book paper wasn't great at the like it was starting to get better but we were still learning techniques that were kind of like proven in you know the the 80s and if you pick up like any comic that came out in the 80s it's like you know the the papers like newsprint kind of thing and if you didn't trap lines the black wasn't like thick enough for uh you know the other the other uh colors would kind of shine through you know like exactly what we got going on in Barda's hair right here like we have the blue down and then we have the the yellow shining through down here 
um, like that should print as black. So we're definitely going to get into it. And um, the techniques that uh, they taught us when I was in school was, by the way, right now, you guys are getting, oh, McCoy's here. Uh, he, he went to college with me. He knows. He was in these, these classes. We're talking about um, uh, trapping lines for print. And I was just saying that the entire chat room is now getting an $80,000 education for nothing. For I do it for you, for you. Um, what they would do is just uh, tell us, you know, you grab all the black with uh, your lasso tool. You click the black black channel, click all the click all the black line art um, with contiguous off. You contract it one pixel, and then you uh, fill it with a eighty sixty forty mix. Um, 80, 60, 40, 100, CMYK. Uh, and so that's what I was doing when I was prepping prepping stuff for print. And then I realized that, like, you know, if you had, like, a warm shine or something like that um, over the line art, like a glow or whatever, like, just like we got back here, it's, like, kind of, like, greenish. Greenish might work, but we did, like, an orange, right? Yeah, we did like an orange back there. Um, 80, 40, 20. You always did 80, 40, 20? Have I been doing it wrong for like 15 years? <laughs> I, th I think that I think that it says a lot about me too when uh, someone in the chat goes, oh, I did 80, 40, 20, and I've been like, I was the one who, one who was wrong. What was I doing? <laughs> uh I think that that is is my personality. 60 40 40? Oh my god. Dark Horse wants 60 40 40. You guys are all maniacs. I don't know. Look, the what I know for sure is so I was doing uh 80 60 40. Um I can't speak to what Dark Horse wants. I've turned in books with Dark Horse with 80, 60, 40, and they have not mentioned it. So, um, too much ink for newsprint? Huh. Well, I've been doing 80, 60, 40, like, my entire life. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't, I haven't had any complaints or any, uh, you know, print, de print departments at Dark Horse or whatever, like, telling me that I was doing it wrong. Um, yeah, let's all thank our, our production people right now. <laughs> production angels. I actually, um, so speaking of production angels, um, so I work on a book called The Realm with uh, Jeremy Hahn, and he and I uh, first did our first book with DC. We were doing a Manhunter backup in Detective Comics, I think. Um and this was 2006, I think. Maybe 2007. I can't remember. Um, I'm trying to think, like, I remember the apartment that I was doing the work in. So it's it, that's, like, kind of the span of time that I have uh, in my mind. Maybe it was 08. I, I don't know. The year doesn't matter. You guys don't care. Um, at any rate. Jeremy was like, hey, I want to do a lot of, like, texture and stuff like that. Um, and I was like, I had never even touched texture way outside of my comfort zone. And we talked a little bit about, like, um, comfort zone and and uh, in the last stream when we were working on this about, like, when you have a lot of experience, you like kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. And when you don't, you kind of like fumble in the darkness and try to like make it work and have a gem, uh, come out the other end. But like more often than not in 20 pages, you're going to have like five pages of gems, 10 pages of like this kind of works, but is a little off. And then five pages of like what happened. Um, in this story, I was like, Oh, we'll do texture. My monitor wasn't particularly calibrated for print and um, uh, 
not 60 40 60 40 20 not using ketones they all exist to deal with newsprint and are obsolete now with modern paper yeah we're all running on like a uh what we think it should be but isn't really anymore at any rate so we're doing this manhunter backup jeremy's like let's do textures i'm like okay so i start um taking like just giant um watercolor textures that i had scanned in and just like putting them on the thing multiplying them down right over the line art over everything and my monitor was set up for gaming like it was very very bright and so i was like it looked good on my end and then i would send it to dc and dc would be like you have ink levels at like um, and when I say percents here, I mean like, so if I had 100% cyan, 100% magenta, that's a 200% ink level. Um, I had ink levels at like 380% in places. Like it was basically as dark as it could possibly be um, without, you know, just like dipping a piece of paper into a paint bucket. It was like, it was like out of fucking control, you know? Um, yeah. Oh my God. And the chat is right. Uh, yeah. So, but it looked fine on my end and I couldn't figure out what the hell is going on. And like, you know, DC production, God bless them. God bless them. Cause they were very patient with me <laughs> and, uh, and helped me out, um, through it. And it was like my first time using texture. So I really didn't know what I was doing. And I really didn't, I didn't because I had before I had just done f like kind of flat cuts, you know, like that kind of thing. No textures. Um, I was using a palette that was made for CMYK. So um, I didn't run into ink levels at all. Like it was just like not a thing that was even on my radar until this project, until I started just like destroy decimating the ink levels. <laughs> but eventually DC kind of got me headed in the right direction and, um, you know, I, uh, you know, that maybe that was not the best project that Jeremy and I had ever worked on, but, um, I've since learned to be a little more, uh, light handed, if you will. Um, he missed his foot, but yeah, so it was out of control, but what we're talking about with, um, trapping and super black is just prepping the, the black on the page to be as uh, dark as possible um, and we'll get into that we'll, we'll so that it prints well and we'll get into all that so we have Barda and Miracle here um, we're gonna actually work a little bit on the alpha channel um we just grabbed like a, a dark gray um i don't know if we're whoop. i don't know if we're gonna keep it we're not gonna keep it dark gray we're gonna like tweak it as we go like 70 percent multiply but let's start messing with this because like she's starting to look a little like zombie-ish you know, like the skin needs to be kind of like warmed up. So we're going to do 30% of this red and that's starting to get there. Um, I actually kind of like the maroon that Miracle's got going on, but maybe we can amp it up just a little bit. Um, make the uh, yellows a little more golden. Uh, yeah, this is starting to look good. Um, let's select everything else. So what I'm doing now is just kind of like selecting the things that are highlights, not the shadows, the opposite of our selection earlier. Um, and we're going to, we're going to play with washing this with a color as well. Um, maybe a blue. But we could we could go with a green, um, do a full kind of oh we missed some, we missed some. Uh, 
Oh man, what is go what is going on? Photoshop, please. I need your help. There we go. Now I think we got them all. Yeah, we missed the hair, but that's not that big of a deal. And a little bit over here for some reason. Oh, that's his side. Yeah, we should get that. Um, this is not what I use the alpha channel for. This is just for me to like kind of keep everything um, you know straight as far as the selections because we're gonna start messing with the selections and if we ever need if we're ever like in trouble if we're ever like hit a point where we're like messing with the selection we're putting in we're painting we're putting in grads you know like whatever then and we need to it's like not working and we've overworked it and we got to go back we can go back very easily with the alpha selections um, so, all right, let's wash these guys with a color. Let's try a green, but I don't know if it's going to work as much as I want it to work. Yeah, I, the green looks good on Miracle, but because cause he's mostly green, kind of, um, but it looks bad on Barda. Yeah, I kind of like this. We're going to mess with the skin tone. The skin always looks weird on Barda because... I keep trying to cool it down and then it, it zombifies, you know, um, 10, 15, 15. Yeah. 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 Now, now we're cooking. Let's, uh, pop the eyes and the teeth a little bit more. Because they're starting to kind of fade back, and, and they're probably going to be, like, the highest points here. 30, maybe? Yeah. All right. So we're getting close. We're getting close. Let's um, tweak some metal. We're doing the same thing. Just putting some cuts in. And then we're actually going to put kind of like secondary light on it too. Um, a little bit of bounce light because it'll make it look like a little more chrome kind of thing. Uh, and you kind of want to, like metal is a tough thing. Um, you you kind of, they it like crumples like a can kind of thing. Like you want to have that in mind. Um, like what is a crumpled up can going to look like? So it's going to have these like these kind of weird like shapes in it, you know? Um and that's fine. You want to think about like where the folds in the metal are. Um this looks like maybe somebody like gripped it. So let's kind of make some weird shapes, see where we end up. Um And kind of go from there uh, yeah I wonder how I mean like I'm sure looking up that manhunter story that Jeremy and I did way back in the day um, I'm sure that compared to my work now yeah Photoshop is chugging yeah this is it's cuz it's a, a oh thank you for the follow uh, Mill illo mill it mill <laughs> um i'm terrible at, at at twitch names i apologize uh yeah photoshop is chugging uh it's because we're 600 dpi um and it's a fairly big document with a, like i'm doing a, like a large selection um and it's uh it used to be black white on the black and now it's like every shade of gray so that makes my photoshop chug too it also helps that like i'm currently coloring on an uh 2008 potato computer so yeah you know by the way i've been looking at getting a new computer lately um they made they made better computers in the last 10 years 
Yeah, I'm also streaming HD video. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, it turns out, you know, somebody came along and made a better computer in the last 10 years. Crazy. I actually had to turn on the fan because uh, my computer is chugging so hard it's putting out, like, an intense amount of heat. I don't know what the over-under right now is on, like, if Photoshop will fail. Also, uh, welcome Jordan Boyd. I think that's Jordan Boyd in the chat, who is another incredibly talented colorist. Um, these sounds like excuses. I'm not trying hard enough. Look, the only thing that's happening is like Photoshop is trying as hard as it can. <laughs> Hey, Jordan Boyd just followed because I complimented him. And you know what? I'll compliment all of you too if you follow. Uh, you can put your uh, Twitter handle in the chat if you want, Jordan. Um, just put the handle, not the full address because I think I set it up so that it'll delete uh, links. But... Yeah, you can you can put it in the chat if you want people to follow you. You don't have to if you don't want to, obviously. If you're getting if you're getting weird about it over there, I don't I don't know. You do you, man. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Is it are we all uncomfortable now? God damn. I I this is my fault, wasn't it? It was my fault. <laughs> There you go. If you want to follow Jordan on Twitter, there he is. Um, yeah, so let's put uh, a little bit of shadow on this on the metal. Uh, we did not do it as intensely as, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Miracle and, and Barda because we want them to be the focus, obviously. So we're going to take a grad and kind of like screen it through so that like they kind of look like they're shining a little bit, like they're the focus. Um, like as you move away from them, it gets like dimmer and dimmer. Um, it's kind of where we want to end up anyway. Oop. It's five o'clock. My dog is getting up to get his dinner. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we can kind of go in and, and paint some of the metal now. Um, I'm just going to use a hard brush, 50%. And we're just going to pick up um, the uh, darker tone here and just kind of like kind of go in and it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to look complicated 50% and just kind of like put some bounce light in you know whatever it's not this isn't going to be the focus anyway and we're going to we're going to do some special effects and stuff to kind of uh pull you pull you away from this stuff anyway so um we should probably fix this though yeah 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 so i'm just kind of like painting in um we'll put some put some uh hard highlights uh in there too um so uh i scanned in a A page out of V for Vendetta um, that I was thinking about doing on the 5th of November obviously uh, but the 5th of November is a Sunday and like I kind of wanted to stream coloring stuff during the week so I don't know we might we might pretend it's a a 5th of November 
uh, uh, stream and then I'll just like rebroadcast it maybe. I don't know. Um, but also, man, the art in V is like, it's a little bit, it's a little bit rough. It's a little bit, it, it, it's been a while since that book has come out. Let me just, let's just put it out there. Um, I'm sure even the, um, the artist, I, I forgot his name offhand because I'm, I'm unprepared for V for Vendetta pre-recorded. You hate it. Yeah. All right. Um, we won't do like, a, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it live for sure. But I don't know if we're going to be doing it live on that Sunday. Uh, maybe I'll just repost it on social media. David Lloyd. Yeah. I'm sure he would, he would even look back on it. Cause it was just so long ago that he would be like, yeah, I've learned a few more tricks since then. Um, part of it was the coloring that like, um, they were doing a lot of washes with watercolors and they were probably working near at size and scanning it in and then like putting it or like painting and then having the line art on a, on like a clear, like actual layer, you know, like not in Photoshop, but like an actual clear cellophane, like layer on top. And they kind of like flip back and forth and paint, um, and then scan that in. It's, it's, I don't even know. I, that would be my assumption as to like how they did it back then. But, um, yeah, it's, it's at any rate, the thing is, is a little bit all over the place. Um, and uh it's beautifully written but uh yeah i don't know we're gonna we're gonna try to tweak a page there's um we're gonna do the page where uh v has blown up the um the the courthouse or whatever the the statue at the top um i was trying to find like a really like glitzy um no scan photography it's photography yeah dude that book i mean they definitely um uh like the time it came out was probably like blew people's minds but it's been a long time since the 80s like that book is probably uh near as old as i am so what we can uh we can do a little update we can do a little update um i was trying to find like a really flashy page but it's weird like the book is actually like not that flashy and and uh a lot of the like action scenes it's crazy because they made them action movie but like a lot of the action scenes are like three panels amongst like all this talking somebody gets stabbed and that's it You're, you're we're done so um which is like neat to read, but is not interesting to color on stream. I don't know. <laughs> that book is dense. Yeah, exactly. Like it is it that that book is work. <laughs> it is not a light read. It was done as a series of shorts. No, but there were like chapters within it. It was like kind of treated like a novel. It It's it's a wild read um to anyone that hasn't i mean like we're talking a lot about you know like its shortcomings but for anyone who hasn't read it it's definitely worth a read just to as like a time capsule thing um oh you think it was serialized maybe it was um i don't know i don't know anything about it uh other than you know like obviously i read it uh forever ago so we're gonna we're gonna put a grad through the cape down here um we're just we just color picked from his cape and uh set it to screen it's a little too yellow or a little too blue let's see if we can do a green yeah so the green's popping a little bit a little bit more but I don't know if that's necessarily what we want let's try it again a little less maybe 
Maybe. We can roll with that for now. Um, but yeah, it's a crazy book. Um, a series of shorts. It's British. That yeah, it's always from some anthology magazine. Yeah, um, this was comics that were clearly before my time. Uh, So, all right, here's the thing. So we kind of put a, put a grad through, um, oh, in Warrior Magazine. It was in black and white. That is so strange because the coloring is so, I wonder if like the coloring, when they finally like brought it to print um, with DC, did DC put that out? God, I have no information. Chat, we're going to be coloring and I'm going to provide speculation <laughs> and no actual legitimate information. But, uh, yeah, I wonder if, um, you know, when they put it out, if it was uh, hailed as, like, a great coloring job, you know? Because it it's definitely different. Um, I, I, like, kind of loop it in with... Um, let them color and finish it. Yeah. Uh, I was right. It was DC. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of like lump it in with um, 300 and uh, uh, Ronin. Like, cause those were the books that I was reading at the time when I read V. Uh, sorry, Kate. Uh, you don't have to Google foo it. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if, if... And, like, those books all kind of had, like, a painterly thing. Like, Lynn Verley um, was was painting those, and she was doing a fantastic job. And then I read... I remember reading V and being, like... Part of the... Part of the so the book's really dense. We talked about that. But it also is, like, very difficult to know what's going on with like characters because everyone's kind of drawn like a little bit similar. Um, all right. So here's the challenge with the Cape. We're trying to light the Cape, but we also don't want to like the interior of the Cape, like pulling forward. So we, in order to, to not let that happen, we kind of have to like, darken it up a little bit um and then we gotta like lighten it up on the sides so and then this will actually this is like a strong argument to um do the secondary light source the yellow that, that i was talking about earlier uh so let's kind of think about that while we kind of like you know tweak some of the little painting here um yeah, so we might do we might do that. Um, I also I got a special guest lined up, um, and we're going to be talking about uh, comic book pitches and how to get your comic book pitch in the hands of uh, editors and how to how to you know get them to to read it, you know, because that's ultimately what we want to be doing is having them read pitches. Um, so that's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, and we'll be taking questions from the chat and stuff too. Like we're going to be, I'm going to be talking a lot because, um, you know, I'm a talker, but, uh, I know that like, you know, you guys probably have questions too. I have questions. Shit, man. I have questions. There's a lot about comics that, uh, I, like totally understand and then there's a lot about comics that i'm 100 percent speculation um and so uh getting to ask those questions with knowledgeable people because like when we're when we're at a like a convention or something um it's tough to like kind of sit down and like pick somebody's brain about 
the industry unless you're like sitting next to them at a convention um because this is not this is not where we want to be this is this is some rough facial rendering <laughs> let's let's polish this up a little bit um yeah so uh yeah unless you're like sitting next to them and spending like literally all day with them at a con there's you can't really like pick someone's brain about this stuff um you can't really do that like while you're getting drinks and everybody's hanging out and they're you know that kind of thing so uh i think it's gonna be it's gonna be informative we're gonna hopefully get uh let you guys know what like editors look for um one of the things that i know i haven't been able to like really rep um scott was trying to look 80 years old yeah i know i dude i'm on it i'm on it trust me um i got i got a little carried away thinking about uh publishing we're gonna we're gonna whoa Maybe we should do like a little bounce light, a little bounce light on the other side of the cape. Yeah. All right. Let's let's fix all this, this all this like rough, rough and tumble inking that's going on here. Kind of like smooth it out a little bit. Um, I think having like a little bit of a, a rough edge to it on the edges is good, but we wanted we wanted to smooth out the little, the middle of it. Kind of pop the nose a little bit. Take this highlight, pop the side of the head. And the bottom lip. There we go. He's looking he's looking a little better. Looking a little less like he's 80. Uh hopefully Bardo will not end up 80. We'll we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um But yeah, I feel like I um when it comes to like comic book pitches, it seems like from what I can tell, it's like the wild wild west. Like, you know, you just have to like put what an editor likes in front of them. And then if that happens, whether it's like, you know, and it has nothing to do with like formatting, but like, you know, I don't even know if that's the truth or not, you know, like that's just my impression of it from years in the industry. By the time a colorist gets like added onto a project, usually it's like all pitched and in the can and like done. Like I'm rarely, um, if ever uh oh man that is weird looking let's keep the eyes but not do the teeth is that weird that might be weird that might be too weird let's tone back the eyes <laughs> that might be weird um but yeah, by the time I'm involved, it's usually like well into the pitch's lifespan. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting conversation. Plus, we're probably going to talk about like some board games and stuff too. So it'll be cool. Uh, we're kind of like Bruce timming it up right now um, as far as like the way he renders because... Uh, he just renders so so well um that's okay that's all right as you can see i'm not like super i don't know like i'm not super zoomed in i'm not uh you know we're just kind of like popping some highlights in you know the way tom rendered the cape and everything the highlights fall into place really really well um 
So we want to uh, kind of light up the outsides of the cape so that they kind of like look like they're folding in, you know, um, hugging him, if you will. So let's do that. Um, it's looking less green because I'm using this like aqua maybe we should use a green yeah it's starting to work it's starting to work let's just, let's just pick this color Whoop. kind of go in and just like even it out a little bit just a little bit all right but yeah 5th of November is coming up and I couldn't I kind of couldn't resist um, I scanned in a page but I don't want to um, and I'm gonna flat it myself and everything but I don't want to drag it out over like multiple sessions so I might show you how to um, kind of like scan in pages that are already colored and be able to pull the black and whites out so that you at home if you're like you know an aspiring colorist can uh, do this on your own with like your own work that you really love uh, as far as comics go and then because um, I, I did it um, on the Spider-Man 2099 thing that we worked on uh, you know I pulled I didn't have the real line art and actually the guy who the guy who owns the line art for that Spider-Man 2099 piece that we did um, he actually got in touch with me later and was like hey if I knew you were doing this you could have just asked me for a scan and I was like, great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to, I kind of want to show you exactly how that gets made or, or how to pull it out so that you can work on anything you want to work on. Cause when you're starting out, it's really important to um, be working on professional line art. Um, if you're working on, if you're an aspiring colorist right now, and you're working on uh, line art that is not professional, um, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're picking up, like, I can't tell if you're good if your line art is terrible and you're coloring it brilliantly. It's still kind of going to kind of look bad. Like, you need to, you need to have a strong foundation um, to work with. These guys are going to be glowing a little bit, so we're just kind of like, adding in a little bit of a secondary light source like okay so we're doing we're currently doing the secondary light source the bounce light from the front um, we're gonna be putting a yellow kind of like halo around them and then also like in the places where it's not exactly yellow we're putting in this like uh, kind of like purple blue in there too because um, I'm a maniac <laughs> and I like noodling on stuff uh, so yeah bear with, bear with me it'll all make sense like um, companies and other creators want to know how you can make great artists look their best yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly um you know they're not they're not interested like if you're an aspiring colorist and you have a buddy who's like also an aspiring line artist like by all means make comics like crank them out you know uh you guys you guys are in the trenches together but if you are like wanting to get color gigs and you want to show them to, pro to professionals all they're going to see is amateur work um You really need to, uh, sorry, I'm like focused on what we're, what we're t doing here. You really need to like, 
um, show them that you're capable of like doing professional work. And the only way to do that is to do work over professional work. It's, it's a little silly, but like, you know, uh, it's what you want to be doing. I've seen a lot of portfolios with where the colorist was all right. And like better than the, um, you know, the inker or the, uh, the inks or whatever they were using um, from their buddy and it was like well you know like I'd never hire you with this if I was in the position to hire so we're kind of working dark to light on this because you know uh, that's kind of where we ended up trying to push the foreground as forward as possible um, which is fine uh, we're going to work on Barda pretty soon we're just kind of finishing up the gloves and stuff so I was never there was like a trim on the gloves and I was never sure if it was like yellow or green or what because unlike all of the um reference i had for miracle like it wasn't there was no trim on the gloves like right here um right here uh so i don't know what exactly we're going to be doing with that but we kind of like split the difference i don't know i hopefully it's fine um and I'm just like putting in little shines on it. All right. Miracle looks like he's done. Let's, um, just to see. Let's put in that secondary light source, the, the yellow. And like, this is gonna get softened up. Um, I'm just kind of like gesturing it in to see like, you know, if it's gonna be something we wanna be doing. And it doesn't look so good over there. Maybe like that. Oh, you know what would look good over there is actually um, this stuff, this, this color. Yeah, that looks better over there. that like blue secondary um, yeah we're gonna kind of like take this and and tone it down and you know push it inside push it in a semi different direction um, soften it up but it looks good I'm into it mm-hmm I mean, maybe the knee would be catching some of it. I don't know. We got to work on Barda before we kind of figure that out. Uh, I wonder what this is going to look like. We're going to select the interior of his cape collar here. Uh, what if we. Because Tom put it like a big shadow back here. So I wonder if. Um, eh, eh. I mean, I Tom is intending to like frame his head here. So let's let's try to do that. Yeah, it definitely helps him pop. He's it's gonna look better on him and and not flatten him out, but it may flatten Barda out. Um, that is really blue. Maybe we can do something like this, where we kind of cheat it a little bit, you know, like, yeah, I think cheating it, cheating it helps. Where like it's like, oh, I know the rest of it's like kind of blue green, but we're just on the interior of the cape around his head, we're gonna do. Not not blue green, <laughs> green green. Keep it keep it primary. 
Uh, I need like the dark. Yeah, there's the dark. All right. Let's kind of make this a little more sophisticated. I kind of want to do like an edge light too on this. So we should probably zoom in. I'm like all over the place with that selection. Yep. Don't do that in real life. Make a selection like this from way out there. You're a maniac. I don't know. Maybe you're not a maniac. Maybe that's what we should have been doing the whole time. Because this kind of looks a little stilted. Oh god. Oh god. We're all over the place. I apologize. You know, it'd probably be easier if I had a smaller brush. There we go. Uh, it looks all right. Um, maybe top of his head? Yeah. All right, I think Miracle is done. Let's work on Barda. So Barda's got a lot of skin showing. Uh, that's gonna be kind of like the challenge to make look right. Um, so how are we gonna make that look right? It's gonna be a lot of gradients because I feel like the more, whoa, not like that though. I feel like the more we Kind of mess with it the more weird it's gonna look kind of thing um and that if we can just kind of like put some grads and then some highlights in it might kind of like make it look all right hopefully um maybe kind of still do the same kind of um bruce tim treatment And we're just taking like, you know, a 50% brush with the, with the dark. See, now it looks like she's like real dark. So maybe this wasn't the right, the right thing we should do. We can back up, think about it a little bit more. Um, maybe we just do a little bit of Bruce Tim and no grads. And by Bruce Tim, I mean, of course, um, he has like a particular way that he renders everything so that it looks like there's like these little shines um, that kind of like scoop out of it. It like, you know, I can show you exactly what I mean. So if he has like, um, you know, a circle or whatever, he does like darkness here darkness here and then it looks like a little scoop kind of thing like this um, and it kind of creates like this dynamic kind of like pulling pulling um, what's it called uh, squash and stretch from animation it kind of creates that like movement without actually making that movement um, this one's starting to look a little strange so let's see if we can actually because like Tom put a little shadow there so let's let's roll with it and kind of yeah we're just kind of and we're just kind of polishing it up with grads like this is kind of where my intention was before we just ended up a little too dark um, okay let's do it over here Reverse the contour of the shape. Sure. Yeah, I know what that means. Reverse the contour of the shape. I got gotcha. you. Oh, 
All I know is I, I set the brush to 50% and I take scoops out. Is that the same thing as what you said? Reverse the contour of the shape? Guys, I swear to God. I... My coloring techniques and where, I, where I've ended up with this is like a caveman just like hit it, hitting rocks together. <laughs> like we end up in the in the right place. But uh, how we got there? I mean, like, I don't know. <laughs> and, and you can color just like that, too. If you've got if you've got time and energy to do that, come join me in caveman coloring. So we're kind of creating here's here's a side effect of like something that um, I did not take into uh take into take to heart is that w since we warmed up the Barda's skin we're making her um, outfit kind of look cold so let's warm up her outfit just a bit twenty let's grab the highlights Ooh, that's too too high too high 10% yeah yeah so she's looking a little more a little less like I don't know like she's wearing like purple or something um, that's not where we want to be this looks good though this did I even change anything oh my god Yes, we changed a lot. <laughs> it's tough. Like, so a lot of times when I'm coloring, like mentally, I'm like, oh, this is what this looks like. And then I'll, I'll give it a second look and I'll be like, oh, that's that isn't actually what it looks like. What's what's in my head is not what's on the page. And then I'll fix it. And then I'll be like, did I even do anything? Because I'm remembering how I thought it should be, you know, kind of thing. Does that make sense? Uh Basically, uh, I'm coloring too fast for myself, maybe, <laughs> or not fast enough to keep up with, with, uh, my caveman brain. So let's just kind of do that same kind of scoop highlight, uh, for the clothes. And we're going to put actual highlights in, too, because, like, Barda is looking a little dark compared to uh, Miracle. Scott's looking like he's he's a bright, shining bastion of hope, and Barda's looking like she is straight up in the darkness. So let's fix that. Maybe even red? No, that's too much. That is... Maybe if we, like, way toned it down. Eh. <laughs> you're leaving for you're leaving work yeah yeah i know man i i wanted to start early today but uh i got a i got some corrections on a project that got a little out of control this red is too much too much for me to deal with um but anyway thank you for uh stopping by we will be starting uh, like my goal time to start for anyone who's who's watching is uh after i take the dog out which is usually like uh you know three o'clock or so um so like i want to be streaming by like three to three fifteen ish but sometimes that does not happen sometimes i get caught up in in emails and stuff And then uh, it's four o'clock and I'm like, oh shit, I wanted to stream today.
Man, Tom's line art is a lot of fun to work on. It's got like a lot of uh, like dynamic kind of stuff going on. It's like really interesting. By the way, if you're digging the stream, we are now uh, sponsored by Twitch, affiliated with Twitch. I don't even know what it's called. We're, we're something with Twitch, and you can you can subscribe for five bucks a month. You can uh, if you like what's going on. Um, if you're finding what I do helpful, you can encourage the stream by by doing that. Um, I always prefer that you guys buy comic books to support if you want to support the stream, um, because I want you to come to shows that I'm at. And be like, hey, watch the stream. I bought these comic books. I loved it. Please sign them. Like, that's awesome. That's ultimately what I want. Uh, but, you know, if you want to, in particular, you know, like, ah, well, I love, I collect digital. Or, like, you know, if you're like, you know, I, I'm, I'm an artist and I don't buy a lot of comic books. Um, this is not the color we want for that, that section. Then, you know, you can also subscribe. It's another way to support. Uh, the next cons I'm going to, that's a good question. Um, I actually was going to start working that out, uh, after th in between Halloween and Thanksgiving and we were one day in. So, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I usually go one show. I definitely do every year, no matter what is, um, heroes, uh, con at Charlotte. Um, that show is just so much fun. Uh, I try to go every year. Um, I don't know when their mini con is going to be, but I might try to make it to that one too. We'll see. Uh, last year it was kind of like under, under the gun to like try to get there and, and they kind of had to make space for me and it, they were very nice and they did that. So, you know, um, that was awesome that they did that. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. So I kind of did a purple highlight here which I think is the right call because um, on the knee, because uh, we're starting to compete with what Scott's got going on in the background. Um, and we don't want to compete with him. We want to embrace him. So why don't we take this? Um, so yeah, I will definitely be at um, Charlotte. I might be at Charlotte Minicon. Uh, I'm going to try to get to uh, C2E2 in Chicago um, and then maybe Rose City at the end of the year. That's kind of what's on my plate. And then um, maybe some local Florida cons as well. Uh, what cons do you hit up? Uh, what cons should I be going to? Uh my Mil Milio, I man, you're I'm struggling so hard with your name. I don't want to be. Uh, thank you, by the way, uh, Nemish, for hanging out. Um, yeah, I will get to the trapping at the end. Um, I just saw you. You were in the chat and are ducking out. Um, yeah, you can always watch the vod uh, on Twitch, or if it's too late for that, then you can watch um, on YouTube. Everything gets ported over there too. Um. Oh, it's Marissa. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll be at Heroes and ECC. I don't know if I'm going to be doing um, Emerald City Comic Con this year. Uh, it's really expensive for me to go all the way out to uh Emerald City. Uh, it's like diagonally across the country. The freaking um, uh, time change is brutal. So. I did not realize when uh, Jordan said Marissa was in the chat, I thought for some reason I thought you had like a different name uh, on Twitch than, than that. I'm, I wasn't sure. I apologize. Um, Heroes is your only cross-country one because it's usually worth it. Yeah, if you're... By the way, speaking of things that are worth it, um, if you're like an aspiring artist 
Uh, you want to get into comics? Uh, Heroes Con is really good because it's filled with a lot of similar like-minded people. You're not gonna you're not gonna pitch to a lot of editors. Not a lot of editors show up. But if you if you just want to like make connections with other artists, Heroes is your jam. It's like very comic centric. Um. Yeah, this is turning out good. We got we got that hotness with the with the rim light going on. Um, <laughs> you only knew because she called you Jorby. <laughs> oh no. Um. Yeah, for anyone who's like an aspiring artist and wants to hit up conventions to meet like-minded people and like you know collaborate on stuff or you're looking for you're a writer looking for an artist um oh thanks man thanks marissa yeah i'm like i'm not quite done with the abs but we're gonna we're gonna get there i'm i'm uh i'm excited about it too the abs are gonna be a lot of fun um we're gonna put some highlights and stuff in there uh I saw that you just posted a uh, White Knight uh, Batman Batmobile thing for a colorist jam, but man, I there's so much going on in that image that I just don't know if I can do it as a colorist jam. It's like it's so densely packed that like I feel like I would have to like really, really focus. <laughs> you know like it, it that like that image is like a half day job i feel like um all right I actually don't think I'm going to tweak that the abs that much. Let's tweak the face though. Let's try to make let's light up her face a little bit, because um, that's where we we want you as a viewer to be like, whoa, Barda is strong. She is doing this effortlessly. Rico style, 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 uh, and focus. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I was actually thinking about trying to tool around with like a very limited palette maybe on it. Um, but this is the thing. Uh, if it's terrible, then I don't, you know, I don't want other people seeing it. <laughs> like we could, we could try out some stuff for it, but yeah. There's a there's a high probability that things could go off the rails. Yeah, you don't have to post it. Yeah, but that's the thing is like I want I want to post it because I want to be like part part of what's going on. I don't know. And I want to if I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it on stream which means everybody's everybody's gonna see already, so. I don't know. Let's kind of, so let's light up the face. How are we going to do that? Kind of like traced out where the highlights are. I already kind of like put the highlights in, but let's just throw a grad through it. Um, it's looking a little bit pale, I think because it's like, yeah, there we go. It's just a little bit too zombie-y. Um, I'm going to throw some highlights in. Uh, we got to red up her lips. Are we over the line art? We are over the line art. My goddamn maniac. Whatever. I planned it the whole time. 
Um, but yeah, well, the thing is, is that I was thinking about trying to figure out what I want to do for the next colorist jam because I've had a couple of people on the stream be like, hey, when are you doing the next colorist jam? And I'm like, I don't know. So I've been tr in the back of my mind kicking around was like, I got to find art for this thing. Um, I uh, like it's kind of tough because you want something that you know colorists can try a lot of things out on yeah i saw the drudge dread one drudge dread one's pretty good too um but here's the thing here's what i'm looking for in a in a colorist uh jam piece like it needs to be made so that it can um, kind of accommodate a lot of different colorists. There needs to be something in it that every colorist is going to handle like a little bit differently. Um, and because of that, like I've kind of been like, and then it also has to be like engaging enough or I also like, I kind of want, and I'm not saying this is this is not necessarily true of the other other line art that has been selected, but um, like I'd like to do something that is uh, undeniably professional. You know, like here's here's a person who got X working gigs or whatever, and like you know, like um, I wasn't familiar with the artists that you had uh, picked, but that doesn't mean they were necessarily bad. It's just like I wasn't familiar with them, so they didn't jump out at me. Um, yeah, so it's kind of, kind of got to fill like all those things because I want, if, um, an amateur colorist like tackles it, then like, I want them to like have something, you know, for their portfolio or like, you know, for, uh, like working on a piece of art that is, you know, undeniably professional. Like we were saying before, you know, if you're working on a portfolio, you need stuff that's like by professionals. Um, I think we're pretty close to done. Uh, I kind of want to. Hmm. So we lightened up her face and it kind of made the rest of the image a little bit dark. So. Let's see if we can. Just a little bit. Lighten up the abs just a just a bit. And then put like the same tone on her chest. And then her arms. So it looks like she's kind of like pulling the focus. Um, but I do agree we should do a uh, colorist jam. If not one of the pieces that you've selected, something, I don't know. Um, I also kind of like, I feel like PJ is an artist who is uh, like, I've, I've worked with before like a long, long time ago. And I feel like he just never gets his due, you know? Um, he's been working a long time in this in industry. And so that's another reason why I wanted to select him because like he's uh, not only is he undeniably professional, but like, I feel like he just doesn't get enough hits on his art. So I wanted to like put his art everywhere. You know what I mean? Um, Man, I kind of want to. That doesn't really work there. All right. So. I think we're. I think we're done with the actual art chores. 
Uh, let's put a little bit of special effects in. Um, we've probably got a screen layer here somewhere. What is this? That's the screen screen. This is kind of special effects. All right. Um, we're going to take a 50% grad. Just kind of like light these guys up a little bit. Is this is this even working? Oh, the screen, the, like the layer is fifty percent already. Fuck it, we'll just do a new layer. Yeah. So, and we're gonna start to do um, trapping in a second. Let's kind of put a shine on these guys. So the thing with superhero stuff is I'm I'm working on the lens flares right now. Please, Magi. Please. We'll render in all the lens flares. Um, the thing about... So is this supposed to be yellow? Is that dot on his... I think that dot is supposed to be yellow. And we warmed up all the yellows except for that. Um, yeah. warming up just a little all right i don't know if i'm f really happy with the way scott's face turned out <laughs> i'm trying to figure out if we're done i think we're very close um and then we're going to talk about trapping because uh someone in the chat was asking for it who is not here but i assume is watching the vod right now from the future All right, let's think about trapping. So, uh, the line art that Tom provided us has a ton of gray in it. Like, you look at Barda's hair, and it's like we're pulling out like really gray tones, as opposed to like this. Like, the wheel says black right here. The wheel says like real light. Like, look at that, real light. Um, Future you is here too. That's present you. You can't fool me. Um, but let's let's take this. Okay, we just copied the whole the whole black layer. What do we got here? This is that. This is that. Okay. What, is this a normal layer? What is this? I don't think it's anything. We're gonna use this layer. Um, we're gonna put the mask down on it. Uh. We're going to alt click, paste this guy in. Um, we're going to do 80, 60, 40, because that's, despite what the chat says, that's what uh, I've always learned. Uh, we're going to invert the mask. And I'm just, I just kind of want to see how this looks. So, this looks, this looks all right. Um, So we're filtering it through this, what we got going on. And it looks, it looks okay. Um, but man, I can't tell. Here's the thing. Okay. So here's the thing. It looks all right. I don't know. I don't know how it would look in print. So like, because it's 80, 60, 40, but like let's see the color picker so it's 80 60 40 100 but like it's really not like you look at it over there and it preserves everything that like tom was doing as far as like brush strokes and all that um but man it's like oh we also have to put it underneath yeah there we go because we knocked out all this line art and then we just accidentally colorized it. So I'm positive that like we definitely did something. <laughs> dear, dear viewer, we did a thing. I don't know if it was the right thing without seeing it in print. I don't know if it's necessarily the right thing. What I'm used to doing with, um, by the way, uh, so I was talking about, I was alluding to this earlier. We didn't get around to it. So I do, um, 80, 60, 40. Um, 
I was told by Matt Wilson uh, that you could do any mix of 8060-40. That um, next step, not just a printer. I'd have to get like a high quality, like, you know, not not like a fucking $50 laser disc or laser disc, laser printer. Just like a legit, like fucking 16 cartridge monster um so like we could do 40 80 60 according to wilson uh and that'll work as well um now here's the problem i was doing that i had with 80 60 40 was that like it has like a blue tint to it or blue gray tint um and we got the shines on his on his um what even is this weird kirby clasp um yeah magic i have entertained the idea of like getting a really nice printer and doing prints for comic-con and i was looking at like printers that were like a thousand dollars and i was like how many prints am i gonna have to sell to like cover the expense of this thing i don't know maybe if i had like a full dedicated studio and i had the space for like a printer that's the size of a bed then maybe i don't know um at any rate, let's focus. So now we have like 40, 80, 60, which is more of a reddish tone. Um, I have the I have the little radial grad. I set it to normal. Opacity is at 100. Um, and we're just going to like put it through the area here. So the idea is, uh, yeah, ink isn't cheap. Yeah. So but then I got to pass you know, those not savings onto the consumer be like, okay, I have these prints. They are from characters that you love in comic books. I've printed them them myself. They are a hundred dollars a piece. Cause ink is not cheap. <laughs> you know, like we're going to enter into that kind of area. And anyway, this is kind of like how I've solved trapping with, um, special effects that are over them that need other color. I've also, been as bold as to say uh zero 100 100 100 um to see how that would turn out and see that's like very red um now you cannot i i did a lot of powers with um like zero or sorry 20 80 80 thinking that any mix of like you know 80 60 40 is gonna work you know we take you know, 20 out of the 40, add it to the 80, we're fine, right? No, it's not the way it works. It's it's uh, something that needs to be distributed to in, in order to be like, you know, make the black as dark as you can get it. Um, so even though, and I, I kind of want to, we're going to be doing, we're warming up the, the glow from over here. Um, and the reason for that is, is I kind of want to like, punch it out a little bit more let's see if we can do that just behind barda yeah something like that like yeah we might huh. looks good i don't know if it's if it's exactly what we want yeah we want to keep the yellow because even though the red looked really good, um, we want to kind of keep it a little bit yellow because we're also semi embracing the like schemes of the characters of the characters that are down here. The miracle man scheme of like this red, uh, green, yellow kind of thing going on. And Bart is also like red, red and yellow. So even though they're like the red looked good, like I kind of wanted the background to be yellow and green. Um, at any rate, I think this is good enough for print. Now, if you want to talk technical trapping, like real deal bullshit, let's, let's save this. Let's turn, turn off. Uh, we're going to turn off this layer too, even though we're just going to, for purely uh, scientific reasons we're going to show you so like this is this is tom's you know like black white channel um rather than this which is like grays all over the place um 
this is normally what you get when you do comics, when you work for Marvel, DC, whatever, um, nine times out of 10, you're going to receive art that looks like this. Um, for a lot of my early career, anytime I received art that looked like this, I would change it to art that looked like this. <laughs> and I never really got any complaints, but I don't know if that's something that you necessarily want to do. Um, so uh, what you would want to do for this to in order to trap it is... So let's let's actually just straight up um, paste this guy in. All right, so we're working. This is untrapped. This is with the black off, and then turn it back on, and you see like we're dealing with all of this. Like it's all it's all bleeding all over the place. Um, that's what we want to stop by doing uh, some trapping. Um, super blacking it and, and trapping it. So what I would do is I'd select all the black and I do that by using the, the wand uh, contiguous off and just selecting a black area and then select modify contract contract it by a pixel and the reason that we're doing this is because sometimes the plates might slide around a little bit sometimes um, in a print run you know, like it's going to print a little differently from the beginning of the run to the end of the run. Uh, you know, if the ink is a little bit gloopier in the, in the, that's a technical term, gloopier in the, the uh, beginning of the run or the end of the run or whenever they replace it, or maybe the rollers, I don't know, whatever, fucking printing, whatever. Uh, if there's anything that could go wrong, like having it trapped a little bit, one pixel contracted, and you can see it see it here um is going to you know it's going to like uh keep it from like if the red plate slides around you won't end up with like a kind of ghosted you know shadow uh of the line art next to the line art kind of thing like a 3d glasses kind of look um basically it covers your butt uh and it also keeps like the color from definitely like, you know, all of the color that's around the ink is also going right under the black, which is, which is where you want to be. So that way you don't end up with anything that's like, I don't know, pix stray pixels, whatever, you know, like that kind of thing. At least these are all the reasons. These are all the things that people have given me over the years of why you do this. I don't like, I don't know enough about printing to be perfectly honest in order to know, like if this is like, a right thing or a wrong thing or like if my facts are off all i know is that when i when i do this it prints well you know um so we can we contracted it uh a little like one pixel um we do 80 60 40 uh like i've been told to but i like people were saying in the chat um if dark horse is uh 80 40 40 we can do 80 40 40 which is like a little bit bluer. Um, so because it's a little bit bluer, it's making like these lights down here that we kind of, I don't know, maybe should have put a little more effort into. Don't tell anybody. Uh, look real good, but like Miracle's clasp, uh, Barda's shine behind your head doesn't look great. So like I said, what I do is I go in and take it and like we're doing you know, 80, 40, 40, we'll do 40, 80, 40. Nope, that's not 40. Um, and that's going to be a little more red. It's going to be a little more maroon. Um, or sorry, magenta. Uh, we set it to normal, 100%. And then, like, where this is behind her head, we're just going to, like, hit it with, you know, the magenta coloring. Um so that like the under layer of it looks a little different and we could even probably like like 20 80 80 but you don't want to do this for the whole image like the reason that it works here is because like it's going to make the blacks look a little red um if you go back and look at some power issue powers issues that i was doing uh i was doing that for like a lot of the pages like if it was like a red scene or whatever i didn't want to think about it i was using red glows 
you know, I just like did the whole page in 2080-80 and the blacks look just a little bit maroon. But the reason it works here is because we have special effects over it. So the blacks looking a little bit maroon in this one area is like what we want. Um, if we turn off, so yeah, if you turn off the, the, let's turn off the special effects too so you can really see it. So like all we did was like, so it's normally this like blue kind of color, this blue gray. And all we've did done is kind of like color it to this maroon color where the special effects are. Um, and we would do the same thing uh, here with Scott. Maybe not that bad because they're kind of tiny. But just like, you know, embrace with the special effects. So like these special effects over here, then the lower left down here are blue so they work really well these special effects need to be warmed up um so that is how i would handle it um with trapping and then once you do that you're all set you save your work file you flatten it you that guy's ready for print but like i said we're not going to be doing that uh, i have to make sure that we save this at the right place maybe not Ooh, where's that save? There it is. Yeah, yeah. But at any rate, we're done. Tom Fowler, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda. We got there. Um, you guys should read uh, Mitch uh, Gerardus and Tom King's Mr. Miracle because it's awesome and it's the reason that I wanted to do this. Um, you should also follow Tom Fowler. He's uh, above me. Um, we can we can switch switch uh, layouts here. Yeah, Tom King or Tom King. Tom Fowler is above me. He's over here. Uh, Tom Fowler bug and Tom Fowler art on Insta uh, and Twitter respectively. Uh, you should follow him. He does like amazing D and D stuff. His stuff's great. It's filled with life, uh, as you could see from the Mister Miracle thing we did. Um, you can follow the stream. You can subscribe to the stream. Uh, this is going to go over on, on YouTube as well. Uh, I have a YouTube. The information is below me in the bio. Uh, we're going to be doing a special guest next time. So you want to hang out for that because it's going to be fun. Uh, and we're going to talk about pitches and editorial and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we're going to be coloring something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what we're probably some heartthrob uh, while we talk because uh, that's what I got going on on the docket um yeah and you can follow me uh here here yeah here uh i'm nick phil on twitter i'm nick underscore filardi on instagram um we're going to be posting this barda miracle piece up there so you can check it out uh it's going to look a little bit different than like what you see on on your screen right now because it's only because twitch interprets it and puts it out there and whatever you know it is what it is uh so yeah come join us uh next time and i'll see you soon thanks for uh hanging out <laughs>